Hello everyone, this is Elad from Astrolabe Diagnostics and this video is part of a series about immune monitoring using flow and mass cytometry data. Today I would like to talk about differential abundance analysis in the context of these kind of studies. Going back to the definition of immune monitoring, one half of the definition is talking about the different cell subsets in the immune system, their frequencies and their states. And in the previous video, I talked about how each sample in our experiment is a big table of numbers. Every row is a cell, every column is a marker, either for the cell type or the cell state. And these represent a high dimensional space for these different markers. And there's various techniques and algorithms for converting them into the abundances of the different cell subsets we would like to measure. So in this new table, every column is one of the samples, every row is one of the cell subsets or the clusters we're measuring. So before we were talking about single cells across the entire experiment, and now we're talking about the frequencies of populations of interest. Now the second half of the definition is taking these values and tying them into milestones of interest across disease progression. And these can be time points, stages, treatments, doses, responders as non-responders, and so on and so forth. Differential abundance analysis is the protocol or mechanism or tool where we identify cellular populations that change in frequency. And let's look at one example using the Astrolabe platform. This is an immune monitoring study of chikungunya infection. And for the purpose of this demonstration, we have two different time points, acute and convalescent. And we would like to see how the frequency of different cell subsets vary across these two time points in the 42 patients enrolled in this study. Now, Astrolabe has already taken care of identifying the different populations of interest. Now it's just a question of taking the frequencies and seeing how they differ across the time points. So I'm going to start by looking at the major compartments, the B cells, the myeloids, and so on, and comparing them across the different time points. So I'm going to switch the view into time point comparison, and I'm going to take the B cells, the myeloids, the T cells, and I'm going to start scrolling down the page. So for the B cells, we see that uh, there is an increase between the two time points from acute to convalescent. However, there is quite a bit of variability in the acute time point. Scrolling down, looking at myeloids, we see the frequency of these cells has dropped by quite a bit from around 30% to around 15% in the convalescent time point. And looking at the final compartment, the T cells, we see that there is an increase of about 35%. Um, between uh, the two time points, starting at 40% in the acute time point and going up to 55% in the convalescent time point. So, going back to the definition of immune monitoring, we're seeing that two cell subsets, B cells up here and T cells over here, increase in frequency as the disease subsides, while one cell subset decreases. Now, there's an interesting um, immunological um, implication here and um, this is because myeloids are mostly related to the innate immune response the earlier one while B cells and T cells appear in the adaptive immune response which takes a while and we can really see that early on in the infection it is the innate immune cells that respond while later on it is the adaptive immune cells now this is just one way to think about the data. Um, and I mentioned before that we have different markers and different hierarchies. So here we're using CD3s for the T cells, we're using CD19 for the B cells, and we're using several markers for the myeloids. However, we can further split these cells. So if I look just at the T cells, I can split them into different types of T cells. And these are going to have different um, changes. So let's just pick one of them 
looking at the naive CDA T cells, we can see how their frequency starts at 3% for the accused time point and then more than doubles into 7.6% in the convalescent time point. So, going back to the definition, we would like to identify cellular populations that change in frequency, and we've now reported quite a lot of them. We saw that myeloids go down across time points, we saw that B cells and T cells go up, and within the T cells we saw that the naive CDA T cells go up even more than the underlying T cell population. Now, there is a few questions that we need to ask ourselves to do this analysis. Uh, the first one is how to define and identify populations. And there are quite a few ways to do this. There's traditional gating, there's different types of clustering algorithms, and um, there's many ways to play with it. Um, if you are curious about how to go through this um, task, I strongly advise you to check out the analysis pipeline webinar that will appear in the video description below. The second question we might want to ask ourselves is what is the denominator for the frequency? So in the figure I've shown you for the uh, naive CDA T cells, we saw um, a, two pole, a two and a half increase from 3% to 7.6%. For this figure, the denominator was all of the cells. However, we saw an increase in the T cells themselves as well. So if we take the denominator to be the number of T cells, we're going to factor out that effect. And once we do that, we will see a smaller decrease. In fact, only a, a 1.7 fold increase for the naive CDA T cells between the acute and convalescent. Furthermore, this might not be a response just in the naive CD8 T cells. This might be a CD8 T cell wide response. So if the denominator is the number of CD8 positive T cells, the response goes even lower to just 1.3. And um, there's a bit of a it's a bit of an open question of what should be the denominator. It really uh, depends on the biological uh, the biological question that you ask. Um, and just to clarify, the magnitude of the effect is going to depend on your parent. In this case, what we're seeing is that um, there is an increase in the frequency of naive CDA T cells. However, a lot of it might come from an increase in the naive CDA in the CDA T cell compartment as a whole. And finally, one last question is how to calculate significance? Which statistical test? you should use here here to take the fold changes and convert them into p-values or FDR scores or any other uh, statistical score that you need to report these findings. I'm going to include four different manuscripts in the video description that you can use as a starting point. So once again, our goal is to identify cellular populations that change in frequency. And um, I've highlighted three questions that you might want to ask here how to define populations, what's the denominator, how to calculate significance. Just for your future reference, if you are using the Astrolabe cytometry platform, here are the methods that Astrolabe uses. Um, we're using uh, clustering and labeling to find populations. Uh, the denominator for us, for Astrolabe, is always all the cells. And for significance, we're using the edge R package, which specifically um, utilizes a negative binomial GLM. So, once again, um, all of the resources are in the video description. And um, if you would like to learn more, please check out the analysis pipeline webinar and the different manuscripts I am going to include. Uh, the next video is going to talk about differential expression analysis in cytometry data. To make sure you don't miss it, please uh, subscribe. Subscribe to us on YouTube and subscribe to the LinkedIn channel. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.